video, I'm gonna show you the stupid, simple way that you can set up a fully powered AI chatbot, an AI appointment center to actually reach out to and answer replies via text to any of your leads. This device has been booking our clients at our seven figure marketing agency, literally hundreds of calls. It's been outperforming traditional ISAs and call centers. It's been able to absolutely crush it through database reactivation, through lead gen, all of that stuff. And I've boiled the process down a little bit. We've done a previous video on this that was a little bit more complicated. If you want that complex video, go check it out on my YouTube channel. But this one is going to be simplified. It'll probably take you just a few minutes. I'm gonna take a little longer than that to explain it to you, maybe 20 minutes tops. But once you have it, you'll be able to implement this easily and be able to adjust it easily in just a few minutes every single time. So let's hop over. Okay, so a few things that we have to do on this. Two things we're using, Go High Level. If you don't know what Go High Level is, it is a marketing platform. It has a lot more than just this ability, but it allows you to send text messages back and forth. If you wanna try all that out for 30 days, if you don't have it yet, right directly below this video, you can get a free trial of it for 30 days. And it has a whole lot of other stuff other than this AI setter stuff, but this is one of the more super powered things, in my opinion, lately, that it's been able to do. And we're only going to create two workflows. One is going to be to initiate contact. Two is going to be to pass the messages back and forth from the chatbot, okay? And the only other things you need is a prompt and a, highlight or a Zapier account that's connected to ChatGPT, okay? So we're gonna go over this piece by piece. The first thing, really easy initiate contact sequence. So this is a realtor client of mine that I've had this set up for. It comes in, you connect it so that it's a Facebook lead, the Facebook lead comes in and then we want to initiate contact. So there's some simple stuff in here that we start with that you would start with with anything that you're creating stuff for in high level, which is add it to the pipeline, create a wait sequence so that it waits a second and then send them the first text message. In this situation, it's hey, following up on the request for offer. I'd love to connect and get the offer to you. Just want to make sure you're pre-approved. Can you please grab a time on my calendar? So we're literally just sending out a message that has that thing on it. Then we're waiting, sending emails, waiting, sending text messages, etc. Now you can do it if you want to get a little bit more fancy, like we're doing some of these other ones. So we're sending the in the in this initiate contact sequence. What we're doing is we're actually splitting it up. Did they reply? Right. If the client replied then we don't send anything. If they did not reply, we send them a follow-up text, okay? What we're also doing on this is we're adding a tag. And so this tag is really important. You can name this tag whatever you want. We name it ChatGPT, AI, Setter, whatever you'd like. But this tag is going to be how the bot knows to talk to it or not, okay? And I'll show you how that works in a second. Basically, we're sending a text. Hey, just wanted to make sure is this the right person? Then we add that bot tag, then we wait. This wait, is important but I mean this wait here sorry is important because we're waiting for contact reply so in the workflow we're waiting for contact reply now none of the rest of these steps just to keep this simple for you guys is necessary okay all you really have to do is send the first text add the tag call it a day and then we can move on to the other part but I'm showing you now how you can create a bot a chatbot an AI powered appointment center that will actually hunt as well meaning it's going to do follow-ups for you on top of also just talking to them, okay? And how it does those follow-ups without tripping over itself is what I showed you here. So to do the follow-ups beyond there, you hit the wait, okay? And that means hit this and go wait, right? This right here. And you actually set it so that it waits, not for a time delay, but waits for contact reply, okay? And then you time it out. So you time it out so that if they didn't reply after a certain amount of time, it will move on to this thing. Or if you didn't, it would just sit there forever until it replied. But you wanna make sure there's a timeout. I do it for 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, this will check. So this is an if else, meaning a condition. So you set it to if else condition right here. And what the condition is, <clears throat> did they reply? So you set the branches to contact did not reply, as in contact replied false. Then you add another branch that says contact replied true. Okay, what does that mean? You'll see in the next segment, basically if the contact replied, I want this workflow to stop because it's handing it off to the bot. And now the AI setter will actually talk to it. If it didn't respond yet, then the bot's not gonna be triggered to reply. Therefore, we wanna send another text message that just says something like this. Hey, this is me again, just wanted to follow up so we could connect as I hadn't heard back from you. Can you reply back with a quick yes so I know I've got the right person? Do this, I do the same thing. Now I say wait, and now I time out after one day. Wait for reply, time out after one day. Reply to the text above, right? And again, stops and hands off to the bot or replies. And you could do this as many times as you want, right? We've got it all the way down to but you see, this is another day. So we do for the first four days, we have this system hunting. Actually, even longer than that, right? Look at this, three more days. So for the first week, we have the system hunting 
and hunting and sending texts, right? So that we can be following up just like a real salesperson would. So by leveraging this, you've literally got a follow-up system in place just like a real actual salesperson or setter or what you would like them to do does. So hopefully that makes sense. So again, you're setting up this workflow at the very beginning. You're adding it in. So this right here is just Facebook lead ad that came through or you're setting it up through Zapier and you're adding a tag and whatever your trigger is to have them come into the CRM. And then you're waiting, sending an intro, adding the tag, and then the follow-up system the way I described. Now, why that tag is important is for workflow number two. So you remember we have one, that's the initiate contact sequence, and then two, we have it set up and I name it just, hey, this is the setter bot. What this one is meant to do <clears throat> is simply pass the information from the text message to ChatGPT. And that's all done through a webhook and through Zapier. So very simple setup, okay? You can see there's not many steps to this. So one thing before we dive into this to remember is the chat, the tag. Why is the tag important? It's because every one of these triggers is going to check for the tag, okay? All of these triggers are saying, does it have the tag? Does it have the tag? Is this person, is this person containing this tag, right? All of this is so that <clears throat> if your setters and salespeople want to do this, when they go into a conversations tab inside of your go high level machine, they can remove that tag and take over the conversation and the bot will stop talking. So it gives you a really, really easy, simple shut off button basically for your simplified AI setter. So it allows you to hit the X on the tag, remove the tag, and then it will no longer respond because this, which is passing the conversations back and forth here, relies on that tag as a filter. So that's why that one's so important on that part. So here we have two things, okay? We must remember right now, at the time of recording this video, there is no way in Go High Level, inside of Zapier, to send a message. So like we're not, we can't trigger a text message this way to send in. So in order to do that, you have to, and I'll do this over here real quick, you have to create a custom field. So you have to create this, all right? So what this is, is you go here and you create a field, and you're just gonna make it multi-line, you're gonna hit next, you're gonna name it response, you're gonna select contact, contact, and you're good, you'd hit save. I already have it, so I'm not gonna hit save, okay? Then, coming back to our automation, so why is that important? Well, it's because we can use Zapier to add response. So you see down here, we can fill in custom values with things, and so you can see inside this, which I'll show you in a second, it's sending back that way. So now you understand that the reason why we needed to create that response thing here is because we can't actually send texts back through Zapier. So two triggers we have here. A is that we got a reply. So this trigger here is set up by saying the customer replied trigger and the reply channel is SMS and they have the tag, the all important tag so it knows to talk to them or not, okay? The second trigger is response has changed. So you can come down here, how you get to response has changed is you actually go contacts. So up here for the main trigger, it's gonna be contact changed. And then the filter, you can just type in response cause you've got that. So this is your custom value. And then you say has changed. Then you would save that. Those are your two triggers. Basically what this is saying is the, this is when they've replied and then this is when that custom value has been updated and it will be updated through our Zapier. Then we're doing another if else condition the same way as we did in the other one. Workflow is customer replied or the workflow is customer changed. So what that means is workflow trigger, meaning this is saying where did they come from? Did they come from this? Cool. Then they go here. If they came from here, then they go here. Why that is, again, is because a customer replying to us will trigger this Zapier, okay? It will trigger the Zapier, and then the Zapier will send back a response, a new response here, and that new response being sent will trigger response being changed, will send this, and that will send that response. So basically, every single time a, a contact replies that has that tag on it, it goes, okay, this person just sent us a text, and it sends it to ChatGPT, which sends a response, which changes, updates the custom value here, and then the condition is now, okay, send that. So we're gonna send that response, because it can now go in here, see contact response. So what we're doing here is we're actually going to custom values, and we're typing in, or just scrolling down to, go here to custom fields, scroll down, response. So contact, custom fields, response. And so what that's doing is the this is updating that response field constantly, and every time it triggers to send it, it'll send the new response via text message. 
So in that way, we're allowing ongoing flow of conversation. And because we have the tag set up here, if we X off that tag, it will stop the communication. So this is a very, very, very simplified version of an AI appointment center build, or hopefully you guys are viewing it that way. So the other parts of this we need is obviously the zap. So what is the zap? Actually, let's talk about first what a webhook is. In case you guys don't know what a webhook is, there's basically two primary versions of a webhook. It's post and it's catch. In this situation, we're seeing post. Post means taking the information here and posting it to this URL, sending it to a specific URL, to another system via this link, okay? On the other end of that, you have what's called a catch. The catch is going to be what actually catches the information that's being sent from the post. So in this situation, it's catching the name of the person, the reply that they're sending, all of that, the message. This over here is catching it so that it can talk to ChatGPT. So what you're going to be doing here is first setting up a thing here. You're just going to call it a webhooks by Zapier is what you're going to do the first zap. Catch hook is what it will be. You're not going to have a child key here and you're going to go here. Now what's important is it will give you a webhook URL. Okay, so you need to copy that webhook URL, come over here and paste it. Note that this does not come with the URL because it couldn't. So you have to get it from your zap and then put that URL here and then save that item. And that's literally it for the first. The second thing is going to be ChatGPT. Now you could do OpenAI or ChatGPT. We have found ChatGPT um, and ChatGPT 3.5 and 4 work better for this type of thing. And so we leave it that way. And then over here, what you're going to do is user message is going to be message body. Okay, so you come in here, when you're from your catch hook, you'll be able to see this right here. You type in, oops, down here, message body. Okay, you're just gonna grab it right there, plug it in up there. You are going to put ChatGPT4 as the model, and then the memory key, you want to have a memory key all the time. This is how it knows what conversation it's having. So this allows it to reference you know, previous questions it's asked, stuff that it's already doing. It allows it to know and memorize and have a real conversation as opposed to just one-off sending. And so for this, we usually use email. You can use phone number. Just make it something unique to that contact that they would actually have. Memory key is super important. And then you can name the assistant. You can give the username over here. And finally, the assistant instructions. This is where the prompt comes into place. Okay, the, all of these things down here are also important. You can take a look at it. Basically, each one explains it. A number between zero and two, higher value will make the output more random. Lower value will make it more focused. That's what temperature is. Maximum tokens to generate the output. All of this stuff has meaning, but you usually can just leave it at what it is. Prompts that we use are pretty specific. I'm going to actually uh, put this prompt down below so you guys can see the example. So we like to treat these like actual appointment setters, meaning I want them to send, ask qualifying questions and I want them to send a link to actually get it booked and I want them to have FAQs for different things. So this is a list of common questions you might receive with answers to them. This is so that the bot knows, hey, if you get asked these questions, here are the things I would like you to use as answers for it. Up here, we're just explaining what it is. We name it, we tell it the company it works for, what the main offer of the company is, and then the instructions of what it is I want you to do. Book an appointment, ask two qualifying questions, then send the link to call, and then some prompt engineering. Again, I'm gonna give you guys this prompt down below so you can look through it and kind of use it and mold it to your own, but this is a prompt style and structure that's worked very, very well for us uh, in the past. So yeah, a couple of qualifying questions and then the link and then the FAQ questions on it. So you take that, you copy and paste it over here, then you continue. Then what you're doing is you're using Go High Level. So Go High Level's system is called Lead Connector inside of Zapier, it's what they did to white label it. You're gonna add update contact. You're gonna connect your account here. Then here you're gonna do the first name, you're gonna do full name, last name if you have it, phone number, email, all of this stuff as much as you can. And then down here under response, this is gonna be the custom value, you're gonna put the reply. So you're gonna grab it from ChatGPT just like this, and you're gonna scroll down until you see reply, and you're gonna put that in there. Then you're just gonna go all the way to the bottom, and again hit continue and publish. And so you're gonna publish this, and then what I would do right away if I were you, is I would go test it. Because now if you've done this whole thing step by step and you've created the initiate contact sequence, what you can do is you can go to your contact card, say here, and scroll down to automations, cool, and you're gonna just put it, you'd put it into the general buyer lead or foreclosure campaign, let's call it, for this one, right? You would say, let's do it 
now and you would hit add. I'm not gonna do it because this is a random contact inside of a client account, but you would do that. And then it will actually send the text message and you should be able to talk to it back and forth to see how it goes. The tag would be here, by the way. So you would say, okay, I've got the chat GPT tag on, right? If you wanted to stop, if you wanted to take over from the bot or your setters or something like that, you just exit out and it will stop talking to the bot. So hopefully that helps guys. This is my very simplified version of setting up an AI appointment setter training. I wanted to get this out to you guys because I know there was a lot of you that wanted to have a more simplified. So hopefully that helps guys. This is my very simplified version of setting up an AI appointment setter training. I wanted to get this out to you guys because I know there was a lot of you that wanted to have a more simplified version of this, a basic step-by-step -step, as opposed to the more complex version that we put out earlier. So if all you want is to be able to do this quickly, be super efficient and for it to still outperform physical call centers and ISAs and all that kind of stuff. This is the one for you. Hopefully you can utilize it well. Put your notes down below this video and let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, let's get out there and get shit done.